My viewers voted on this configuration for a $200 light gaming and media PC build which will be raffled off to one of my Patreon supporters following the publication of this video. This build was of interest to me because I have been curious as to what one of these AMD APUs is capable of doing. And that brings me to what is the center point of this build, which is an AMD A6 9500 dual core processor clocked at a base speed of 3.5 GHz. This APU also has integrated Radeon R5 series graphics with six dedicated GPU compute cores. For this build, we will be using the stock heatsink and thermal compound that came with the processor. For the motherboard, I went with the cheapest AM4 board I could find on Amazon. This Gigabyte A320M Micro ATX board has plenty of I.O. options and will be able to handle our AMD A6 with zero issues. I would have preferred to opt for dual channel RAM, but our budget left us only to be able to afford a single 4GB stick of 2400MHz DDR4. I was really surprised to find a new 500GB hard drive for under 20 bucks. However, on paper, this the Seagate pipeline is no performance monster, and as you will see during testing, it does become a bottleneck at times. All of these parts will be housed inside a Rosewell Micro ATX case and powered by a 400 watt power supply. This is YouTube, and if I know YouTube, I know I'm going to get a few inevitable questions. So first off, why didn't I opt to go for used parts? Well, I really want to build a completely new PC. Also, some people have an irrational fear of buying used PC components off sites like eBay. So if you happen to be one of those people and have a tight budget, this video is for you. Secondly, I know I'm going to get the classic, you did a terrible job picking out parts and I can do it better. Well, if you feel that way, that's absolutely fine. Feel free to put your uh, suggested build down in the uh, comment section. However, I've already gotten a couple of those and all the suggestions surpassed the budget for this build. So if you do want to do something like that, they have to be all new parts. Uh, and the budget has to be uh, just around $200. Third, I know I did not include the price of Windows, and that's because operating system choice is really up to the user. If you want to use Windows, that would cost you an extra $30 if you buy a license off Kingwin. But if you opt to go for a Linux distro, chances are that's not going to cost you anything. If you just plan to use this as a media box, in my opinion, I think a Linux distro such as Ubuntu Mate is probably the better choice. This was a very easy build to put together. I did cheat a little bit and use some Velcro straps I had lying around for cable management, though the Rosewell case did come with a few zip ties for this purpose. Also, another good to know is that the motherboard comes with two SATA cables, so you don't have to worry about picking up any of those separately. After finishing the build, there were two things with the case that I thought some people might find annoying. The first being the bright blue power light, which is very bright and very big. The second minor annoyance is that the PCI slot covers are flimsy and shake from nearby vibrations, causing an irritating metallic clanging sound. So let's say you walk by your computer, the vibration transfers through to the floor, to the case, you're gonna hear that metallic clanging sound from the PCI slot covers. I did try to record that sound for you guys, but unfortunately my microphone would not pick it up no matter how much I cranked up the sensitivity, so I gave up on that endeavor. In synthetics, scores hovered on the lower end of the spectrum, which is what you would expect from a system like this. In Passmark, it scored in the 30th percentile, and in 3 d Mark on Cloudgate, the system scored a 3755. The disk speeds were also on the slow side as expected. One of the main goals of this build was to put together a dirt cheap rig that would be capable of some light gaming, and I think we succeeded at that. Older titles such as Left 4 Dead 2 and Portal ran without any hiccups at medium settings at 1080p, and newer, less demanding titles such as Fortnite and Minecraft ran at playable frame rates with reduced settings. Games run into issues though with loading textures and materials on the system. These tend to take a long time to load and cause games to hang or to not load the textures at all, which was what happened when it came to Fortnite. This issue also manifested itself in Far Cry 5. Though I could not get the campaign to run, arcade mode did. It took ages to load the game objects and textures when the game started, even at the absolute lowest settings. This made the game completely unplayable for the first three minutes after spawning in. After some time though, the frame rate did go up, however the game was still what I would consider to be painful to play. 
The system handled both local video playback and video streaming through YouTube and Netflix without any noticeable frame drops or video artifacting. On top of being a decent media and light gaming PC, this configuration would also make an excellent daily driver. If you plan to use this just as an office or school machine, then I would highly recommend swapping out the Seagate hard drive that we opted for uh, and going with a cheap 64GB solid state drive. You'll have to pay a little bit more, but overall the system will be a lot more responsive with a cheap solid state drive. Though I do not intend for this desktop to be paired with a 4K monitor, I did hook it up to my Dell P2715Q just out of curiosity. The system can output to a 4K monitor, however the UI becomes noticeably less responsive and 4K video playback stutters and hangs, constantly making it unwatchable. Since I did mention earlier that my preferred OS for a dedicated media PC is Ubuntu Mate, and I know everyone is going to freak out about that pronunciation as usual, but that's the pronunciation they have on their site, I took a brief look at how Mate 16 16.04 handled on this system. I did not notice any difference between 1080p video playback on Windows versus this Linux distro. General performance was also the same as it was on Windows. I downloaded Super Tux Card and at max settings, gameplay was smooth, though this isn't a very demanding game as you guys can clearly see. If you are interested in building this PC for yourself, all the product links will be down in the description. Thanks for watching guys and gals, and I will see you in the next installment of A Computers and Technology.